Welcome everyone to Best Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is Thursday, August 15th. This will be the last Stock Pick of the Day video for the week. We are going to take a look at one in my portfolio. I don't cover a lot of stocks in my portfolio, but we're going to take a look at this one today. It is out of the real estate sector, Omega Healthcare Investors. This is a REIT. Before we get too far in the video, if you could do me a favor, Hit that thumbs up button down below if you find any value in the content. If you are a dividend growth investor, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the best in interest community. Most of you out there who are watching the channel are not subscribed. So click that subscribe button. Join us on this journey here. And make sure you click that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. We do this stock pick of the day series Monday through Thursday where we take a look at a company stock that's pulled back on the day to see if it is presenting any value if it meets the screener that I have we'll run through the screener here in a second so you can see what we're going to look at in the videos and we cover all the videos the same it's the same screener and just because it happens to meet the screener doesn't necessarily mean that I am buying it means that it goes into my uh, watch list and if you have any suggestions I also cover uh, suggestions from subscribers or viewers in general so go ahead and drop them down below in the comment section if you have a stock you'd like me to cover I have a few on the list right now that I'm going to be getting to over the next couple of weeks and really do appreciate all the subscribers out there and everyone out there who's taking the time to do that the channel continues to grow because of people like you and hitting that thumbs up the subscribe button the notification bell as well as dropping a comment and watching the videos to the end all of that really helps with the YouTube algorithm it helps to spread the videos a little bit further. So again, really appreciate everyone who's taking the time to do that. Now, this is the best in interest stock screener. This is how I set up the video. So we're going to run through, you know, understand the business, growing free cash flow, growing dividends, dividend payout ratio, 75% or less. We're going to look at the valuation based on dividend yield theory, buy below current cost basis, so we're within 15% of a 52-week low. So if it's in my portfolio all already, that would be where we'd look at below my current cost basis. If it's not, we'd look at 15% of a 52 week low or lower. Obviously I like them as low as possible. Return on invested capital, return on equity. I have these joined together. I might break these up a little bit, uh, but 10% or better is what I'm looking for there. And 5% or better on earnings per share growth. For price to book, I utilize that for banks or financial companies like insurance companies. You can use price to book for any company. Just make sure you don't blindly use the one. One works good for banks as one being fair value, anything under one being undervalued, anything over one being overvalued. For other companies in other sectors like the industrial sector, technology sector, consumer staples, consumer discretionary, all the other sectors that are out there, if you're looking at price to book, make sure you're comparing that company's price to book to companies in the same sector in the same industry and what their price to book is to give you kind of a range of where they should be. Now must meet five of eight to make it onto my watch list or six of nine if it's a financial company. Well, back to the video here. Go ahead and check them out on their homepage, www.omegahealthcare.com. That's www.omegahealthcare.com. That is their homepage where I pull this information from. Again, this is a REIT out of the real estate sector. Focused on the future of senior care since 1992. So this is kind of a similar company to a medical properties trust. Uh, for those of you who out there may be familiar with that company, another REIT kind of in a similar space here. We are Omega Healthcare Investors Inc., a real estate investment trust REIT that provides financing and capital solutions to skilled nursing facilities, SNFs, and assisted living facilities, ALFs, operators across the US and the UK. We have a strategic focus on long-term healthcare industry and have partnered with 65 regional and health uh, and national healthcare providers. Through the use of our triple net lease structure, our goal is to provide strong returns to our investors while serving as the preferred capital partner to our operators so they can concentrate on providing a high level of care for their residents. So again, really senior health care, senior living uh, since 1992, not only in the United States, but across the UK. Now, the reason we are taking a look at them, down 0.84% on the day, we are talking about Omega Healthcare Investors, ticker OHI, a REIT out of the real estate sector. It looks like they're down a little bit further in the after hours here, at least whenever I pull this information. 52-week range as low as $27.53, as high as $38.85. So they are pretty close to their 52-week high here. Maybe that's why they're starting to pull back a little bit. Usually a company bounces off its 52-week high as well as its 52-week low whenever they hit those. Market cap of $9.969 billion. So they are a small cap company here, a beta of 0.95, so just slightly less volatile than the overall market. Again, one being the market. 
anything over one being more volatile, anything under one, you know, slightly under one here being less volatile. PE ratio elevated for a REIT, though you don't really want to check out. Uh, PE doesn't really apply for REITs here, $28.47 per share. Uh, EPS is sitting at $1.32 per share. Earnings date sometime between October 31st and November 4th, so it should be coming up here in a little over a month. Forward dividend is $2.68 per share per year. They are a quarterly payer, so we'll see that here in a little bit, what they pay uh, per share per quarter towards the end of the video. Very nice starting dividend yield here at 7.07%. My yield is actually over 9%. I bought these this company a couple years back and locked in over, I think it was a 9.3% yield on my shares. X dividend, and you'll see my position here in a little bit as well. Again, I am long Omega Healthcare Investors. I actually wish I'd have dumped all the money that I put into uh, Medical Properties Trust into this one and wouldn't be doing much better. But hey, we can't uh, go back in time and change things. X dividend date, August 5th. So we just passed their X dividend date. They are paying out their dividend tomorrow. So if you were to buy them now, you would be in line for the next, not the 15th, not the one, or actually that was today. Is today the 15th? Today the 14th. Today, they paid out their dividend today, not tomorrow. Uh, so I'm a day behind, and I just said the 15th at the beginning of the video. So uh, dividend date was today. So I got some dividends today. I'll have to check my brokers to see if they hit. They usually hit the day after, uh, but we'll see how that went. Uh, so you would be in line for the next dividend payout. Obviously not today's, but you would have to wait several months to get that. Now, one year target, at least according to Yahoo Finance, $35.71. So they actually see it as overvalued right now with it coming back to this 3571 range. Let's jump over to the right. We're going to take a look at dividend yield theory. To do that, we look at their five-year dividend yield average right here, 8.35%. We compare it to their current 7.07 .07, or over here where it says forward, 7.07, .07, forward annual dividend, same thing. That is the current. The forward annual dividend is the current dividend, right? They're just projecting that out into the future. Uh, it could change tomorrow based on the price, but that's what they're projecting right now. And since it is lower than their five-year average, that speaks to overvaluation. So at least according to dividend yield theory, this one is potentially overvalued. Payout ratio, you really don't want to pay attention to this right here. You want to look at funds from operations. The payout ratio is at 203.03%, which is very scary. It looks like they are definitely going to cut their dividend. But again, funds from operation is what you want to look at for REITs. If anyone knows the funds from operations, go ahead and drop it in the comment section down below. I did not look that up for this video. Now we're going to look at free cash flow. We want growing free cash flow over time. Typically, if a company has growing free cash flow, uh, they do things like pay down debt, make acquisitions. In this case, they would buy more, uh, more elderly care facilities uh, or build new elderly care facilities, help the, uh, the companies that they work with build new elderly care facilities, or they pay dividends to us as shareholders. And typically, if a company has growing free cash flow, they have growing dividends as well. Now this company is not growing its dividend. We'll see that here in a little bit. Uh, but with such a high yield, uh, it's all right. I don't mind this one not growing its dividend. I would love for them to start doing that. But with such a high yield, again, my yield is over 9.3%. I look at it as a very high yield bond with some potential for upside as far as price appreciation. Going back to free cash flow, you can see here in 2020, they paid or they received 708 million in free cash flow 2021 up to 722 million 2022 it looks like a drop down to 625 million though they did repurchase some shares there so that more than accounts for the drop in free cash flow but 2023 we are seeing a decrease so from 2022 to 2023 down to 617 they also didn't repurchase any shares so there is a decrease there at least from 2022 to 2023 we'll have to wait to see what 2024's numbers looks like uh so not growing over the last four years. Nice growth there through 2020 through 2022, but drop in 2023. And 2023 numbers are actually number are lower than 2020. Now we're going to jump over to stockanalysis.com. The previous page information was brought to you by yahoofinance.com. Uh, and those are two sites that I am not affiliated, just sources of information for me. And I always recommend that you look at more than one source as well so you can make sure the information you're getting is accurate and up to date. Don't blindly trust one source is giving you the right information. Now, they recently, or well, not so recently, about a month ago, July 9th was the last time they updated price targets. So as you can see, even this information is a little over a month old now. They have an 11 analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus buy, right? If you were to go to their homepage, you'd be able to click on each one of these little uh, tabs of the half pie there. This would be a strong sell, sell, hold, 
buy and strong buy and of the 11 analysts they would tell you where they fall in each one of these i'm assuming more are falling into the hold and buy range than the sell range i don't believe i saw any in the strong sell range uh, they were mostly in the hold and buy range i think they might have had one or two here in the sell range uh, low estimate of $30, which would be a 19.85% decrease from where it currently sits. Average estimate of $33.64, which would be a 10.13% decrease from where they currently sit. And if it happened to hit their high, that would even be a negative 3.82%. Uh, that would be a decrease of 3.82% from where they currently sit. So looks like this one may be slightly overvalued uh, according to where their estimates are, right? And maybe that may be why it's starting to pull back a little bit. So it might have gotten a little bit over its skis, let's see. Uh, we're going to look at statistics here, return on equity and return on invested capital. I like 10% or better for these metrics. Return on equity sitting at 8.73% does not meet the metric I'm looking for there. Return on invested capital, 3.86%, not over 10%. So again, no check there. EPS growth, I like 5% or better forecasted, not listed. And revenue growth doesn't look good either, negative 1.64%. So the numbers don't look great on this one, to be honest with you. Let's go over and look at dividend here, uh, history real quick. First, we'll start with my position. Again, I have 289.348 shares. Uh, my cost basis is much lower than where it's at currently, $28.57. So I bought this uh, very cheaply, right, under their lowest estimate, where what we just saw, 29, I think, was their lowest. So I bought it at 28.57, locked in a very high yield on this one, and I am up significantly as well at 28.91%, right? So. I have 8,200 into it. It's currently worth 10,800, up $2,606.59, and happy to sit and collect the dividends on this one with a 9.03% uh, yield. Now, there are quarterly payer. Again, payout ratio, look at funds from operations. Dividend growth, non-existent. Uh, they are not growing the dividend. It has been stagnant uh, for a while. Buyback yield, a negative 0.571%. So they don't buy back a lot of shares, but when they do, it looks like they are not doing it very efficiently. Shareholder yielded 1.36%. And you can see here, they have been paying this 67 cents going back uh, at least to 2022. And even further than that, if you were to go look at their history, uh, they do pay out on the May or February, May, August, November timeframe. So I do like that. Uh, but no dividend growth to speak of on this one. I would like it if they started to raise that uh, dividend growth a little bit, even if it was slow div dividend growth with a 9% dividend yield. I'm fine with slow dividend growth. I'm actually fine with no div dividend growth. Again, I treat it as a bond on the, uh, a company like this with such a high dividend yield. Let's check out the screener. Understand the business. We got to check there and nothing else, right? They do not have growing free cash flow. There was a drop from 2022 to 2023. They do not have a growing dividend. It's stagnant at 67 cents and has been for a while. Payout ratio is elevated. It's over 75% or less. I need to look at REITs and uh, look at uh, funds from operations for these and maybe tweak this one a little bit whenever I do REITs. But for this particular one, we're going to use the same criteria as everything else. So it would not get a check there. Dividend yield theory says it's potentially overvalued. And it may indeed be. Uh, buy below current cost basis. It is not under my cost basis. It is not even close to within 15% of a 52-week low. Return on invested capital, return on, uh, on equity, not over 10%. Earnings per share growth, not listed. I'm highly doubtful that it is over 5%. So only gets one. So this one, actually, I will be doing more of a deep dive into the financials on this one, looking at where they're at revenue-wise, margin-wise, probably taking a look at funds from operations, see where they sit, and, uh, if, and probably looking at what they reported out recently or are going to report out here in the future and see this one where it sits. I'll probably put this one on a... Uh, keep an eye on list here. This one along with Kraft Heinz and a couple other ones who have not raised their dividends are already on my uh, list of companies that if they don't start raising their dividend uh, may be on the chopping block anyway. So this is not good to see. I don't like to see, you know, only one check because understand the business. Unless you really don't understand how the business is making money, you should be able to look at their homepage and kind of figure out what they do as a business. All right. So let me know what you think of this one in the comment section down below. And as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to venture freedom. Join the best in interest community. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I am always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So again, I have several companies in uh, on my list to do a video on whenever they pull back. I actually looked at a couple of them today. Boya was one of them. 
that I know was suggested. It did not pull back. It was up, I think, two or three percent. So that one is on my list as well as a couple others. Uh, HY is another one I believe I have on my list. So I will be doing those over the next week or two. I just need them to pull back on a day uh, that I'm not looking at something else. So uh, be patient with me. Those of you who have made those suggestions, <coughs> excuse me, I will get to those. It'll just take me a little bit of time. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, fence and security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great week and a great weekend. And we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to tune back in. Even though the Stock Pick of the Day series is over for the week, I will have my portfolio update on Sunday morning. So tune back in for that one. Hey, I'm not a financial advisor. You can read through the rest of this, but I am not your financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial guru. If you need to uh, go see a professional, make sure you do that and make sure you do your own research before investing and invest based on your criteria and your investing timeline, retirement timelines.